yeah, so I was going to say mm-hmm. um, that's going to be a thing that you're going to notice when there is a huge trend in social like change. Mm-hmm. We, we can't change everything overnight and expect not to see a bunch of like side effects from that. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we're going to balance that out. That right. wasn't the intention of feminism. We're not saying that. Right. It but was an like, unintended of consequence. We're seeing a lot of negative things from that because we don't know how to take that as a society. Nobody has adjusted to that. You can't do it in one generation or even two. Mm-hmm. So you're going to notice those for a long time until people do adjust and we change as like cognitive beings. Yeah. I, I mean, here's the thing. I don't think women like like because here's the thing. Feminism started about equality, which is great. We're don't, don't get it twisted, guys. We think women should be able to work and have all the same social privileges that men do. We're not saying that. But what I am saying is that an unintended consequence of feminism is it's liberated women, but it's also liberated them from the family. Yeah. OK, mm. so what's happened is there are more single women than ever before. Divorce rates are high, whatever. Who suffers? The children suffer. And then when the children suffer and they're not raised in stabilized homes, what happens? They end up becoming fuck ups, they end up becoming violent, they end up becoming criminals, et cetera. Right. But that's Always. more of like, I think when you decide to become a parent, most people are not in the right mindset. They're not yes. thinking like, oh, yes. I'm going to change my mind about this. Individual. But peel it back a layer. Why are they not in the right mindset? <laughs> it's because I'm they saying haven't both done of the people. Work. No, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you why. There's no father in the home. No, I'm mm. saying before the relationship collapses, people decide to have children and they're not really in the mindset to think of how like monumental this is. For I, I get that. But mm-hmm. the, you, you're missing my point. I'm saying they don't know that because there's not a father there to tell them, hey, you're not going to do this. No, fathers keep keep before sons the father leaves that's what i mean what do you mean before the father leaves i'm saying like when you decide to have a child with somebody mm-hmm. both people are not like consciously making that decision mm-hmm. they're just kind of going into it not realizing so you're talking like, about the father oh, of that child you're talking about the father of years. that child yeah oh no i'm peeling it back a layer i'm saying the father of those two that are trying to have the kid see what i'm saying but here no, see what I, it's 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 an foundation. endless cycle yeah. the father the two p- people that end up having that kid, right? Right. They don't come from a stable family house, them, uh, a stable family themselves. So it's now what impossible. they're going to do is they're going to continue that trend and create another unstable family because the father ain't going to be there for that second generation. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a domino effect. Single mother household here. But- she raises a daughter and a son with no real guidance because you need a man's leadership. You need that discipline. Men are there to teach their children that there's consequences to mistakes in life. That right. there's a reality. Your mom is there to nurture you. Your dad is to let you know that, hey, there's. I'm here to slap you in the face before the police do it for you yeah. and put you in jail and you become a felon, whatever. So dads keep daughters off stripper poles and sons out of jail, period. May you know I what I'm ask, saying? Was but, your father? Let me finish. Yeah, I grew up in a two-parent household. Okay. So, so, so the thing is you need your parents. So the reason why people get in there and have kids at a young age or fuck up or whatever is they don't have a two-parent household a lot of the times. Yeah, and but... if you look at criminals, you look at rapists, you look at the worst people, dege- degenerates, alcoholics, drug addicts, whatever, predominantly come from single parent households. It's a trend that can't mm-hmm. stop going once it begins. And what are you saying but... the blame was? Because you said you blamed it on feminism, that there was um, single parent households, correct? It's a large contributor to it. Yes. And why do you say that for your for from why do you say that? Because the divorce rates are high. Over 50 percent of marriages end a divorce uh-huh. and the divorces are initiated overwhelmingly by women, about 80 percent. OK. But what if that guy was just But there has to be a reason abusive? beyond that. Yeah, yeah, there's a reason beyond it. It's not like I mean, feminism in your perspective is probably you seeing a female gathering her power, knowing her worth, and actually, you know, leaving a toxic situation that doesn't serve her. That's probably your perspective of what feminism is. But you know, some guys, like you said, they don't really have much standards. They when they get you, when they have you fully, they treat you like doo-doo. You know, dep- depending if that guy has moral code and usually most guys don't have moral code. So mm-hmm. sometimes we get so deep into things like that. And if we want to leave it and we get empowered because we want to live our best life and find someone who's on our same match and our same level, that's not messing around. Kind of like him. He's more of the loyal type. You're more of the polygamy type. Um, mm-hmm. Then that's why we get empowered to kind of want to have <laughs> someone that is on the same page wow. as us. I just asked for you to be loyal 
fun, goofy, just like you could have money. If you don't even have money, just have You're 18, your standards are gonna change drastically exactly. in the next five to ten years. You're pretty I young. promise you. Okay, so whatever. Okay, from my basis of what I think, morally, morally, what I want doesn't change. Maybe the physicalities of a man or the personality traits that may change. But morally, what I do want is faithfulness, I want truthfulness, and I want transparency. And that will never change because that's just who I am as a person. Cool, you can find a guy that will give you that. Yeah, you but think, you think you think it's gonna change to me wanting a liar? But, Come here, liar! No, but Come but, here. but listen. But most girls don't choose those guys, though. Of course, they don't. But so that's they why, okay, whose fault is it then? So that's but their is that fault. really that's us their choosing fault. them, or is that the inavailability of good men? Mm. Exactly. Because then no, the good men are out there. It's just a woman, a woman you know overwhelmingly them. friend zone them and or don't take them serious. The guy else. Each CBS. and every one of you probably has a guy that yeah. you're friends with right now that's polite, nice, treats you well, everything like that. But you don't give him the time of day because he might not be attractive. He's corny. He's lame. Whatever. He's short. He's Everybody short. Hey, sexual pair. attraction is a big thing in relationships. You got to be that's sexually cool. attractive. That's cool. Well, that's guess cool. what? The guys well, that are sexually what? attractive have options, and they're not going to just take <laughs> you serious.